I've spent four weeks in South America with the Panasonic Lumix S52X, and these are some of my favorite shots. <laughs> Usually I only start packing one or two days prior to the trip and that's when I realized I only have one battery for the Panasonic Lumix. Let's see if it was enough for a whole day shooting when traveling. First I want you to keep the pricing in mind for the rest of the review. My usual camera, the Sony a7S III, costs around 4199 euros. While the Panasonic Lumix S52X only costs 2199 euros. So let's see if both cameras still can compare. When traveling, I'm mostly interested in three types of looks. Handheld shaky, handheld stable and the gimbal shots. First, I was curious about the handheld shaky look because it brings lots of excitement and action into your shots. The best way to do this is a top handle but I didn't bring one on my trip, so what I did, I was just holding the camera on the lens and was walking around and actually, I really love the style of these shots. The stabilization is turned on in the Lumix and it really looks great. The micro shakes are gone and it still has this natural kind of movement and I love it. But what if I really want to achieve a stable look? while filming just handheld. So the most important thing when doing this is to keep the camera close to your body and I have to say, if I do so, the Lumix does a great job. I really love the stabilization. I guess it was always the strength of Panasonic cameras to have a great stabilization and also in this Lumix S52X it's integrated, like the stabilization works great. And if you put Warp Stabilizer and Premiere Pro on it, it even looks like shot on a gimbal. Talking about gimbals, I also took the Gion Vibel 3S with me on this trip and I have to say it works great with this camera but actually I don't really like using a gimbal because it's more weight and it will make your shooting less flexible. Of course a gimbal allows for specific camera movements that are not possible when just shooting handheld and for this it's great. But when traveling I mainly aim to just do all my shots handheld without any gimbal. Panasonic did something great. I mostly use my videos for YouTube and Instagram at the same time, so usually I shoot horizontally and vertical twice. And that's lots of effort. But Lumix introduces the open gate format, which means you can record the whole sensor area. It not only allows you to shoot in 6K, but also the format is 3 to 2, which means we get more space on the top and on the bottom, so therefore I can still use my videos for YouTube, but even better crop them for Instagram in a vertical format. It's still not the same like shooting in horizontally and vertically, it probably never will if you have a look at the um, framing and so on, but it's a great improvement. I feel like every camera should have this. This feature offers great quality and saves me lots of time. That's what I need. Now let's talk about a point which is really brand related so you won't find it on any camera and I'm talking about the colors. Actually I was never 100% happy with the colors on my Sony camera because the skin tones just don't look too natural most of the times so it just costs a lot of time in post-production to fix the colors of the skin tones and other objects if they don't fit. So I was really curious about the colors of the Lumix S52X and when color grading my first clips I was really impressed. Like putting on the conversion light brings a natural look with nice skin tones and all the other colors like the greens in the grass, the brown or gray in the mountains just looks natural and kind of cinematic if you want to name it like that. The only thing I do is putting one of my six LUTs on top of it and that's how I always achieve the color style that I like. You can get one of my LUTs for free, link in the description. If you're wondering what I shoot in, it's just the Panasonic V-Log format and I shot most of my clips actually in the OpenGate 6K format, but when I needed slow motion I chose 4K 50 FPS. That's it, you get 10-bit colors, which offers lots of possibilities in the color grading. But what about the battery runtime? 
I told you I only had one battery for a whole day. Um, I didn't want to bring my big power bank with me, which would be possible. I could charge the um, camera over USB-C with power delivery pretty fast, actually, but that's not what I wanted to do. I challenged myself to use just one battery a day and it was way easier than expected. After every day of shooting, I had at least two of these bars in my battery left and that's more than enough. I, I never run out of battery, so I didn't really need a second or even third one, which is great. You have to imagine it's not like a really production where you shoot all day long. There you might need more batteries, but if you're traveling, so it means walking around, taking videos and photos, walking around again, taking shots, walking around, taking shots, then one battery will be fully enough. When I started filmmaking many years ago, I actually had to decide between a Panasonic GH camera and a Sony Alpha camera. Because what I loved about the Panasonic cameras always was the stabilization. It was better than Sony, but Sony had one feature which just was a bit more important to me, the autofocus. Sony had incredibly fast and reliable autofocus, while the Panasonic GH cameras didn't really work if you want to vlog with a more action-packed theme. So I decided, just because of the autofocus, to go for Sony. And since then I stayed with Sony and it's so good to see the first Lumix camera that I use having such a great autofocus. Because I can tell you, in many different situations the autofocus worked great and fast and reliable and that's what I'm looking for in a camera, especially when trying to vlog or filming fast moving objects. So all the features like the human, eye, face tracking, animal tracking really worked. And I was really impressed because that's one point I wasn't expecting, especially at this price point. I felt like I got a package with a great autofocus, great recording options and great quality and colors. And this was the point where I realized, okay, it really can compare to my Sony. But if you ask me what a bad point about the Lumix S52X would be, I only could tell you like the cropping if you film in slow motion, that's something you have to get used to. I mean, you can get used to and you can plan your shots based on this or your lens equipment. So that's not the biggest deal, especially if you realize that you save 2K just by choosing the Lumix over the Sony. And what you can feel is that the processing in the Lumix doesn't work as fast as in the Sony, for example, if you start your gallery or if you want to play back a video, it just takes a couple of milliseconds longer than on my Sony. Also, this is something you can get used to, um, but overall, I'm really impressed for this price range, how good it is, how reliable it is, and which quality it really brings. And that's what I'm looking for in a camera. I need good quality, and every idea I have, I want to bring to life. And the Panasonic Lumix S52X allows me all of that, so I can clearly recommend it to you as well. One of my next videos will be an in-detail comparison about the Lumix versus my Sony A7S III, so make sure to follow to not miss out on it. And don't forget to like the video if it helped you, if you liked it. See you soon.